It says those boys are chatting again. Yeah, they are. Okay. I'm just, <coughs> those I'm being, boys e are chatting again. <laughs> I'm just being extra paranoid because, uh, it's been so long. There's layered dust on everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally. Vocal totally. cords are all, ugh, they're all gangled up. I haven't spoken <laughs> in years to any living human. <laughs> this is always the, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the purgatory, the podcast purgatory right now. Post live, but we don't know if we've actually started yet. You never know. I think Greetings. you can see my is my chat. How's my chat doing? Are they did they wake up? I see some I see some excited emotes. Oh, that reminds me, I gotta I gotta oh, yeah, ping my up. Discord. It's kinda up. like the um what is that? Uh Schrodinger's cat. It's the Schrodinger's podcast where <laughs> when you just go live and you're simultaneously offline uh -huh. and online. And people are both watching and not watching. Well, it's the, it's the <laughs> same uh, if a tree falls in the woods. Because if you're streaming to the internet but nobody's watching, are you truly streaming to the internet? Mm. You guys got to cut through the you got to wow. cut through the fluff. Does observation imply reality? Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. The quantum concept. If when witnessed, that instance becomes real, or the other instances of that thing not real if when i masturbated in the ocean and nobody was there to see it see? did i actually masturbate in the ocean this is when you're when the police bring you in for public indecency <laughs> give that exact excuse and they're like but we did see you and you're just <laughs> here's the like, footage hey, whoa. i just well, I was was say, do you have any proof do you have any proof <laughs> that could be that could be deep faked <laughs> who knows it could be deep faked oh man yeah it's the, uh, I mean, not to link it to the current events of the day, but I think accidentally uh, Western culture got a dose on perceptive reality in the last four years. Pretty good stuff. Y'all should have y'all yeah. should have read the uh, parable of the cave, you idiots. Why I aren't did. you reading Plato, you goddamn rednecks? Yeah, Jeez. I did. I actually have never read about it. I just, I've heard references to it, so I think I'm smart. I think I may have skimmed the Wikipedia page uh, about the allegory of the cave. Yeah, that they're convinced that... um the shadows on the wall are our life yeah like that is the world it's illustrative that your perception is just one angle of a greater whole and you can't assume that what you see is all of it Mm hmm like video i don't know i was trying to turn it back to video games you like guys like video, video games? games you guys like video games here Did anybody hear about man, these video games man i love video games so much <laughs> me too hey everyone okay. in chat both chats we got both chats up here you guys like them video games huh i'm playing to the crowd here yeah i know they do I know they do. It's the classic call and response. See, it's good to <laughs> know what sort of... <laughs> who likes video games? Ah, <laughs> I, I, I do. Yeah, that guy! <laughs> um, it's good to know like what what sort of call and response works with your chat. Um, I've come to like appreciate that mine... The more I treat them like kindergartners, the better it goes, you know? The more, <laughs> the more I get of a response. It's basically that. Right now, what's on screen, the, the the controller, and then I give them a little fake controller with happy faces, <laughs> and they just light up. Oh, they just, that's so, so cute. Oh, yeah. They they just, they want to, <laughs> they're just so, they're so excitable. That's adorable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is something, it's, it's tough because I feel like at our hearts, we all want to be treated like little, little baby children. Which is, we want the, our merest accomplishments over-celebrated, we want to be fed snacks, and we want to be able to lay down whenever we want and go to sleep. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the only time that happens, you're going to have to follow me on this one. Okay, all right. When you're That's on an airplane. Oh, I was going to say, when, when you're drunk. But also when know. you're drunk. Uh, and yeah, you, when you're drunk. Uh, being drunk can make, can make that process a little, a little difficult, but it, it occurred to me once that being in a plane is, is just like being a toddler. Because you're lower than the adults who are coming through to like give you food. And they're usually like over nice to you because they're trapped in a tube with you. Mm. Uh, so mm. they're like, oh, look at you, you little guy. You finished all your biscuits. And you're like, I did. And then you hand the wrapper <laughs> back. <laughs> they're like, you want another whiskey? You want another whiskey? <laughs> and then you just kind of fall asleep in your chair and drool on yourself. But it's just kind of normal on an airplane. But if if you do that, well, I guess there's a couple. You could do that on a bus. But I don't know if you're if you're in court, like if Bruce is on the stand, and he knocks back a little airplane whiskey and falls asleep, it's gonna look pretty bad. 
It looks really bad. Yeah, <laughs> your lawyer is just fuming. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, to... I did not. I did not masturbate in the ocean, and then I drink my whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> we had. This How does he get that? <laughs> he just has like a bottle in his boot. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green, there was one thing you were not supposed to do on the stand, <laughs> and you went and did it. Yeah, I'm also could. masturbating right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> How are you doing that? <laughs> Unless you observe me masturbating, I'm I'm I am both masturbating and not masturbating. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's a that's a great quantum, question. Quantum masturbation. Do you, do you think anyone's ever masturbated while on the witness stand in court? Yes. Yes. I do. Okay. I'm sure of it. Actually, I'm sure that if I googled it, I'd find it right right now. I'm not going to because I don't want to, but I'm pretty sure that it exists. Because generally, if any human if there's an idea for something, somebody's already done it. Right. Usually. Especially Usually. when it comes to masturbation. Especially when it comes to masturbation, because people have been masturbating for thousands of years. <laughs> <laughs> for thou I mean, they've been masturbating with frogs for thousands of years. You know you can oh, do that, yeah. Kraken? You know you I, can do that? I think I saw it reference at one point. I'm like, that's gotta be fake, but now that I I can understand that it's not fake. That's, that's bad. <laughs> It's not fake. No, I think gorillas uh, use frogs to masturbate. And so, therefore, yeah. we can, too. <laughs> it's got the gorilla seal of approval. I'm just imagining, yeah, yeah. like, a, <laughs> like what was those, uh, that, that, uh, that cereal with the gorilla on the front where he was just kind of like. Which, which one is that? Lawrence, do you know? That sounds really familiar. Was it, like, a sporty gorilla? Was he, like, playing soccer? No, it was mm. a photorealistic gorilla. Oh um, goodness, that is not appealing at all. Which I mean, chat, what, chat, which one is that? What are we talking about? I'm not about? crazy. It, they had little balls. The, the little like like uh, little uh, little yellow gorilla puffs. Kicks is gorilla the only cereal I know that is that it. Gorilla, gorilla munch? munch. I've never even heard of that. That sounds like a sexual maneuver that you might try to perform while on the yeah. witness stand. <laughs> Your Honor, all I'm right. deep into a gr gorilla Wait, munch right now. It wasn't even gorilla munch though. Yeah, 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 it was, it was. Munch. No, it was, it was. The, yeah, it was, sorry. It is Gorilla Munch. It's for hip? There's an old box for it. It's for hippiers? Hey? I've never heard of it. Was this like a local thing? Like, how did you... I'm Hold looking on. this up now, yeah. The, I've never heard of Gorilla Munch. The box art is worth seeing alone. Never. I, I love that shit. Gorilla Munch was great. Oh, what the hell is... Wait, this is the There Is No Need To Be Upset monkey. Oh, that must be an edit. Wait, is it that the real... Gorilla Munch. Box? Yep. That was the original box. Really? Yep. Oh, it looks like it says organic. No wonder I didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Viro kids with a Z. Oh, mm. yes, yeah, the Russell the Jimmy's meme. Yeah, came from a Gorilla Munch. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, today I learned. Gorilla. Wow. Thanks, Kraken. Look at that guy. All right. Uh, Gorilla, Gorilla Munch. <laughs> He's such a fucking presence. Yeah, right? I know, he really, he really is. Yeah. There's a lot He's of masturbating with a toad right now. <laughs> <laughs> While giving a deposition, I feel, I feel like, uh, I feel like I don't want to, I don't want to speak unduly, and I, I'm sorry to put this pressure on you, gentlemen, but I feel like this gorilla should be the mascot of our podcast now. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm. Are we allowed Although to claim he is that? He's already the mascot I mean, of a it's cereal definitely that's existed illegal. for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it from an existing <laughs> product, but so I don't know that we could do that. And a super old meme that I don't think anyone has like thought of for years. Hold up, I, I know how you know, to. Memes know how are to get reborn all the time. I well, if you just superimpose Lawrence, you're really good at Photoshop. If you superimpose my face over the gorilla's <laughs> face, then we could do whatever we want. It's also this is the sort of face you can easily put. Um, Fire use, fire use, fire use, there. fire use. <laughs> nice. There. Fire yeah, yeah, use. That's it. That's it. That's the way to fire do it. Fire use. If you um, if you like, this is the sort of face you crop that out and you put it on like you slap that like thing on twenty percent opacity. You put that on any thumbnail and it is immediately, you know, a recognizable meme. You're like, <laughs> what is that gorilla thinking? I gotta watch this. <laughs> uh, I saw just the other day, uh, hilariously, all the fair use and no copyright infringement reminded me. I saw somebody upload like it was like a Disney clip or something on YouTube. And in the d description, it said, I apologize to Disney for uploading this clip. And I was like, that doesn't do anything. If you apologize to them, you think yeah. they're not going to sue you? And I was like, <laughs> I, I just thought it was funny that, that they, they thought that since they apologized to Disney, they weren't going to get sued. And I was like, 
Boy, I wish the world was like that. Can you imagine? Every single day. Like (laughs) the Disney, like internet scrubber that goes and bans people comes across this and like he's about to do it and looks at the description. But wait. He said (laughs) sorry. Sorry? (laughs) He said sorry. (laughs) He looks at his hands and he's like, what have I been doing all this time? (laughs) He changes his whole life. Yeah. Because of this one person who apologized. It's pretty ridiculous that nobody knows that if you commit an offense of any kind, all you have to do is say, I'm sorry. And they can't get you. What am I looking at? Sorry, right. this is this is not porn. It is a YouTube oh thumbnail. Oh my god! I'm I'm putting your your idea to the test here. Lawrence is. I think he's putting. <laughs> oh, the gorilla on it. I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. There we go. <laughs> Craig, I mean, and you're right. That. It's you're perfect. That. You're gonna click that every time. Ten times out of ten. There's no way to not click it. Damn. Ten times out of ten, man. Actually, let's let's juice her up a little bit. Hold on a second. Are you gonna put a red arrow over it? Oh shit. Damn. damn, I'll get there. I'll get there. Red arrows, what red if, circles. What if you okay, take all of the things that go on a usual thumbnail, you but you but you put it at twenty percent opacity. <laughs> just all at the what same time? The, yeah, and you're like, wait, is that? And you're like everyone's just like squinting at your thumbnail. And by then they'll just gonna they're gonna click because they gotta know. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is actually a, you did gorilla face without realizing it. Yeah, no, I know. That hundred percent that gorilla face is my face. Like I've made that oh. face many times to Autumn. And I'm just staring at her. I just I did the. Fuck. It's just like that. <laughs> a really, it's a really slight uh, upturn of your mouth. That's why. And uh, I've done that many, many times. Here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. All right. Lawrence is doing Photoshop. Well, this is uh, look at the multitasking <laughs> by, this, by this gentleman. The blending is going to be a little rough. That's that's going to be a little. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you're so good at this. <laughs> I wish I, I, our audio listeners cannot see what Lawrence is doing. What Lawrence is doing is superimposing my face over that gorilla's face. Um, that gorilla, which they also have not seen. They have not <laughs> yeah. seen the gorilla, but again, the gorilla is from the Gorilla Munch gorilla cereal. Gorilla Munch. And if you've not seen that cereal, I uh, encourage you to Google it because you will recognize the gorilla once you see it. Oh, that's that is pretty good. <laughs> that's perfect. What you, yeah, like oops, what you. What you really want to do is just just get the human the human parts of it to make it even creepier. The problem is when your subject and, and smile. Your, your overlay don't have the same size of face. <laughs> you're getting there. You're you're scaling it up. Yeah, yeah, you got it. A little bit. Gorilla face is orgasm face? No. Not, Not really. Not if that's really. your orgasm face, then yeah, there's a you, there'd be a problem. <laughs> I can't. Oh, God, I, look. If that's my orgasm face, then that means I cannot be. Uh, nothing can make me happy anymore after this pandemic. Um, maybe that is my my orgasm face now. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Maybe it's no, just maybe, uh, maybe they're right. <laughs> it's me um, repressing the terrible rage that, that's building in me every day. <laughs> oh man, Lawrence is Damn. making the Photoshop right now. It is. So it is. It is actually very trans, like entrancing to watch Lawrence Photoshop. I really he's, yeah, he's great at it. He's there very we go. Good. I told you. All right, Fair we use. got a new mascot, boys. Well, that's parody. <laughs> so actually, yeah, you wouldn't, you would, you just put parody on it, and you're good to go. Yeah, now, now that's actually acceptable. That is actually parody, and that's okay. Uh, except you know, that I Justin mean, Bieber struck one of our videos when I did a parody of his song. So, oh uh, yeah, did yeah. you apologize to him in the description? Oh no, I didn't. See, there you go. <laughs> Shit. Justin himself tunes in. He's like, you know, I like the video, but he didn't apologize by using the song. So we're going to have to get rid of this one. Sorry, bud. You think he's in charge of striking everybody yeah. on oh, YouTube? Oh, of course. I assume so. Otherwise, how could it be legal? He has to That's personally be the one to stick That's the dagger. That's a really good point. Do you think that there are people like, I think I would probably get a really fun uh, little jolt of dopamine if i was the person striking <clears throat> videos on youtube of like you know music that's sold to millions of people like if, if i was Justin bieber sitting behind a computer and like you shove your lawyer out of the way and you're like no get it's my turn i get to strike him <laughs> and then you sit there and he's like strike 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 you think he does it for an hour every day just to like make himself feel better yeah uh, that is a pretty therapeutic I and mean, that's like as one percent as they come <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being able to, to shut down like small time creatives that are enjoying your product and you know using three seconds of it yep 
Well, that uh, that has to be like that has to also be the one percent of uh, of copyright infringements, right? Ninety nine percent of it has to just be people who are just aping your shit because they want clicks. So maybe not. Maybe maybe there are a uh, a, a sizable um, an, a creative army out there who are using uh, creative works in interesting new ways. But I don't know. I've been on YouTube long enough to to think that mostly it's, yeah, it's just people yeah. trying to game the system. I feel yeah. like the I feel like the joy of it would quickly be replaced by the drudgery of just having to wade through the thousands and thousands of people who are operating in bad faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of those. There's just a lot of the re-uploads of Frozen <laughs> is all it is. It's just a bunch of Frozen clips that that some kid wants to watch one million times. And they've somehow put ads on it and YouTube didn't catch it. <laughs> I don't know how that happens, but it all, it happens every day and I see it every day. YouTube's awesome. Content um, creation is awesome. Snipes Gaming in chat said, your gorilla face is my new iPhone background. LMFAO. Well, here, let me... Uh, did you just did you just grab it from, from the stream? They just screen grabbed it. Yeah, yeah they must uh, have screen grabbed it. I'll, uh, I'll export a little PNG for you guys. That was fast. <laughs> that was really fast. Untitled 1 already exists. Oh, crap. Untitled, untitled two, Untitled two. Un oh, no. The sequel to Untitled <laughs> One. Rip, rip. I've been untitled. years. <laughs> to immigrant we go. This is a talk to the internet exclusive, you guys. What other podcast gives you a free iPhone wallpaper while you're watching? None. Uh, you know, <laughs> unless you're watching be... on audio and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that's true. Well, if they're watching on audio, they're probably on their iPhone. They can go get it right now. You're right. Just, t we'll we'll read out the URL while <laughs> when it's finished, then that you can go find it. Here's the URL. The, the URL is GorillaMunchBruce.com. GorillaMunchBruce.com. If you go there, We're rebranding also. Now we're yeah. announcing it. <laughs> yeah, that's this the name the of... Gorilla Munch... Wait, the Bruce... Is there a way to mix Gorilla and Bruce into one word? Bruce Rilla. Bruce... <laughs> Gru Gruce... Gruce? Right. <laughs> Gruce Brunch. Nice. <laughs> That sounds perfect. Yeah, buy that URL, Kraken. Pick it up. Yeah, okay. Grease brunch. I'll be yeah, right there. Yeah, pick it up. <laughs> oh, Lawrence put a link in. There it is. Uh, yeah. I.imgur.com slash, uh-oh. Is that an L or an I? Well, here, I'll, I'll help out a little bit here. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to make a, I'll make a, I'll make a short URL for you here. Oh, thank you. Bitly. Yeah. So, what was it? Bruce Grunch? Whatever you want. All right. Bruce, <laughs> does, Bruce Brunch. It doesn't matter. Bruce Brain. That's <laughs> <laughs> my back half. Why Lawrence you, is yeah. now making a bitly for our audio listeners. So the audio listeners, if uh, Shit. if right now you're listening on any sort of phone or a computer or whatever, you'll be able to type in a bitly here for very shortly once Lawrence uh, gets that URL up. I don't know why it's... There we go. Link has been edited. All right. It's bitly... Bitly slash Bruce Grunch. Uh, Bruce I don't, Grunch. Yeah, I don't know why I did that, but B R U S E G R U N C H. Nice for your uh, for your quick and easy access to our new mascot slash the thumbnail for every future podcast we're going to do. <laughs> or I, the other idea that occurred to me was every podcast Lawrence just we slap together a thumbnail while we're doing it, just based on whatever we're talking about. We just grab like two different things. Oh yeah. Are, you know, Bruce Grunch's face on it, and then it just slowly keeps getting corrupted from episode to episode. Oh, so we're we're, we're building on it. So the, this is the very first one, and then oh, either no. either or, either it's a new mascot or it's a it's a another fair use um, amalgamation. Also, like if Lawrence, if, since Lawrence is the one doing the work, if Lawrence doesn't want to do the work one week, oh, we can then, also do it. Yeah, then yeah, then we can do it. It'll be worse. Like, but yeah, it's like when we did the. Uh, I liked the, uh, the the Microsoft Paint drawing game. That was fun too. Oh, yeah, man, that, way back when we were in person. Remember that? Yeah. No, actually, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't remember when we were in person. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm starting to. I, honestly, man. I don't remember either. I was just reminiscing with a friend about the uh, Universal Studios experience um, here in Los Angeles and how mm. how much we missed it, even though it's terrible. I like I don't Universal Studios is like, it's not the greatest thing in the world. Yeah like the water world stunt show and like the guy in the Grinch costume and the mummy ride and all that stuff. But, but I was like, boy, oh boy, do I wish I was at universal studios right now. 
And then as soon as I go for the first time on, I'll be like, all right, well, I don't need to go back for another year. <laughs> Bruce, bite, bite, bite your tongue because Super Nintendo Land is coming. Oh, is that over here in LA? It will be eventually. Uh, I think it's open in, it's in Universal Studios to Tokyo, uh, where it, it's opening in the next month, I think. But yeah, the plan is to open it in Orlando and in Los Angeles. Oh, shit. Did you see the video of like what they are doing there? No. Huh. It's pretty neat, although I wonder about some things. There's some things in that video that can only work in Japan. Um, but so so Disney actually did this, and Bruce, you probably know from Galaxy's Edge, they were adding like little interactive mini games to to the park. Mm -hmm. So if you had an app, there was like some AR stuff, and if you interacted with certain things, little doors would open and like show you little like hidden characters and stuff. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's it's super super neat, and and interestingly, actually pretty pretty amazing that they're going to open a galaxy or they're releasing a Galaxy's Edge expansion for the Sims, since the parks aren't open and they got to make money somehow. But uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty wild stuff. But uh, the Nintendo Land walkthrough had Miyamoto like showing all these interactive bits. So there's there's the thing where you like you have a wristband and like you you hit blocks and you get coins and the coins go into your like app, uh, and then I guess the coins get you badges and stuff. I can't remember what the coins are for. But uh, there was some cool stuff where there were actually like skill based or timing based interactive bits. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had to like hit a block at the right time that would set off this chain reaction and then knock a shell into somebody. But if you didn't do it at the right time, it would go like burp, burp, and you had to like try again. Um, so video games. Yeah. yeah, they're they're doing like interactive video game stuff in the park, uh, which is super hmm. cool. But then when I think about Westerners, I think about uh, a 25 year old shoving a four year old out of the way because they missed twice <laughs> in a row and they really want to get their their key coin or whatever. Or just like like shitty parents waiting in line while somebody tries eight times in a row and can't get it and they start yelling and complaining i don't know maybe <laughs> maybe maybe western audiences will be a little a little better about it i also just imagine people like you cannot invite people drunk idiots <laughs> in theme parks to punch something uh which is like the coin box you actually have to like kind of smack it with the with your hand or with mm -hmm. the uh, the wrist thing and i'm just like oh my gosh there's going to be so many people with like fractured fingers yeah. and it's like it's like the reason why in escape rooms they're like do not use physical force ever to solve a oh, puzzle yeah. you do not yeah. need to and because <laughs> like that's what our dumb you know fucking gorilla brains need is we need to be told you cannot hit thing uh or it will break and then you go to japan and they're like yeah go ahead just like you know within reason and <laughs> it comes to the west and just You're like <laughs> just, <laughs> just smashing through it. everything well you guys know i'm sure you know about this at uh, universal studios the in Harry Potter land, if you buy the $60 Harry Potter wand mm -hmm. rather than the $50 one, it's got like, it's like either NFC or infrared on it. And you can walk around the Harry Potter land part of Universal Studios and wave your wand at specific parts of it. And it only moves for those wands. Right. So like, it looks like you're doing magic with that infrared wand. Have you guys ever done it before? No. Um, I've been it's, there, but I did not cool. buy the sixty dollar wand. <laughs> I bought the sixty dollar wand, of course, yeah. and I and I did it once, and I was like, "That was neat." And I watched like I watched kids doing it, and it was really cool. It was like it was really neat yeah. to see to well, see like, their eyes know, light up, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, like eight year olds doing it," and it was really neat. Um, also, I wish that uh, what's his name had picked me in in the Olivander. wand shop. Ollivander yeah. had picked me uh, to. Uh, to be the chosen one, but instead he chose the eight-year-old in front of me. And that makes sense. You know, I said, hey, I get it. I understand. This will be an experience he remembers forever, but I'm going to spend $100 here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just shove him out of the way. <laughs> you meant to point at me, right, Oliviander? <laughs> I, I am, am the, the chosen, chosen one. one. And then he starts shoving on walls and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, would you rather be the person who issues copyright strikes or would you rather be the person portraying Ollivander that gets to choose the kid and then oh. see the disappointed look on every like mid 30 something uh, <laughs> parent as their kid ha gets to enjoy the fun that they wish they had? Ollivander every time. Yeah. 10, t ten yeah. times out of 10. Because then that's real power. Because well, you, <laughs> you get the feedback in person, right? Every time you disappoint someone, you get to see the disappointment on their face. And, it, and then you just, you just like, you suck it in like a Dementor. <laughs> and, and you love it. But it's not even one. It's a whole room filled with that's true. teens and adults. Yeah. 
and you get to crush their dreams. You get to you can, both make the dream of one lucky child and crush yeah. everyone else's at exactly the same time <laughs> over and over. I like this this depiction of this like sociopathic Ollivander because I'm imagining yeah. him now like getting up in everyone's face, pointing at one child, but maintaining eye contact with like everyone else that doesn't get it. So he never yeah. actually looks at the chosen one. He's just looking at all the disappointment and soaking it all in. Well, that's, I mean, that's what I was going to, like, if I were Ollivander, actually, if I were any of these characters, I would 100% mock them, but very subtly, you know? So, I'd like, I'd be mm. like, oh, you little boy, you look like you're the chosen one. And I'd be like, what? I saw you, 30-year-old, trying to move towards me, not you. And then it's like, what? I asked the 17-year-old <laughs> girl, nope, no, nope, I saw you move. And they're, and they're looking, I was like, what are you talking? I didn't move at all. I've been standing here waiting for you to do something. <laughs> And I was like, well, I saw you. Just drag You're it on so long. Yeah, you are not the choice. And I sit there pointing at him. You are not over and over. You are not the chosen one. You are not the chosen <laughs> one. You have the energy of the chosen one, but you're far too ugly. <laughs> you. <laughs> I know. You smell. You're clearly greedy. <laughs> you're clearly greedy. <laughs> I think I would, Bruce, you, you have to do that. And then right at the end, after you've extracted the maximum amount of torture, you have to pick the like parent who's waiting in the hallway looking at their phone and like you have to say their name a couple of times and then they look up and they're confused and you're like yes you you're the chosen one walk past all these other people up here Man, find the person who's exactly. the least engaged exactly what oh, how, how do we give one person this power um we cast him that's how we we give him about 150 dollars a day and uh, he puts on a bunch of makeup <laughs> and then we go all right get out there you got 30 shows to do. <laughs> what do you think their like editorial or what do you think their managerial review at the end of the year was like? Good question. You've made a lot of dreams and crushed many more. And for that, we thank you. That's a really good question. For giving you actually. a 3% raise. How do you, yeah, how do you review the guy who plays Ollivander? You got to send in uh, like little, uh, what are they called? Like, 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 uh, Agents, you know, not not agents. Oh, secret oh, oh no, secret secret shoppers. Yeah. yeah, like secret shoppers, but they're kids, and they're like, yeah. they're, you know, <laughs> it's like Mister Universal's kid, and like, you know, little Universal goes through and is like giving you the eye, and they're like, you better pick me, pal, because I learned to talk from my dad. <laughs> and then they don't pick him, and uh, he bad he start, and he starts crying, and then Ollivander goes, oh no, not you, the one that's crying. You're clearly a bitch. You're a coward. <laughs> Howard, you could never be the chosen one. <laughs> he's like, he's like, cadaver, and they just I, cast the death think, spell on him. Cast the death spell on him. Everybody's staring, looking around like, is something supposed to happen? <laughs> Man, boy, do I miss Universal Studios, guys. I really miss it. Have you guys... Did you go on, right. did you go on the uh, the Harry Potter ride in Harry Potter Land? Yeah. The one where uh, it's like the, the screens and you fly around and yeah, yeah. all the movies and stuff. It's really I cool. hated that one. Oh, I, I like a lot of rides. I, it's very hard that I that I hate a ride, but it I actually felt sick, and like I do VR all the time, and I felt so sick doing that one. It was it 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 was throwing you around while trying to make you focus on like this, yeah, you know, this digital screen that was coming at you, and so you're supposed to like focus on that while being whisked away, and so your eye lines are constantly being dragged everywhere. And oh man, it just it really, it really got me. I uh, I yeah, I liked the ride. I mean, I don't I don't remember it being like something that it was like, this is amazing or anything. But it was it was fun. I don't know, Lawrence, have you ever been on it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't. I don't think I went on it when it was full 3D. <clears throat> Try can did did you have to wear like 3D oh, yeah, goggles? Oh yeah, it was 3D. Yep, yeah, yep. they they that they rolled that back pretty fast. Uh, so when I when I went on it, I think it was just a big old 2D screen, and. More like I like Harry Potter. It's fun, but it's not like formative to me. So I didn't really get the like deep core chills from that ride. What I yeah. will say though is, that just as a living human, it did feel good to sort of be harnessed into a big old gesticulating arm that sort of shook me around for a little bit. <laughs> I just felt like uh, I felt like I was. You know how whenever you see an adult and they're wearing like a baby in that harness on the front of their <laughs> chest, yeah, yeah, that felt like me. Except the adult was like doing, doing like. Uh, insanity like, like they were doing yep. interval cardio yeah. and i was just like Pal yay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it felt good they're like you're sitting there well basically you just relax your body and mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything and you're just like, you're moving around <laughs> i've always wanted to be in those like you know those like uh i hate to make the reference but it's the first thing that popped in my head those little like lawnmower man like vitruvian man spheres 
that you sort of like lock your arms and legs into and then it just kind of twirls you all around like crazy. Yeah. You guys know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about? I've I always wanted exactly. to do one of those. I want to I want to yeah. strap up into one of those things and see how that feels just flipping all around and all over the place. I'd probably throw up. That would be cool. I've never thrown up from like motion sickness and I want to know mm -hmm. what that feels like. Yeah. I imagine it's like a slow building one cuz it's not like from a poison in your body trying to get out. It's like just <laughs> your entire body being like, we don't know where we are. We don't know where we are. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And <laughs> your brain's like, don't do it. Don't do it. And you're like, no, no, no. I, we're, we're panicking. We got to we gotta go. I got it. We that can't is, have any food in us. <laughs> yeah. the other, the other half, like, no, that way's up. And they're like, no, 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 let's don't do it. I wonder, it, it, why, it does, why does your body do that? Yeah. Why, like, how does that help you to throw <laughs> up the, the contents of your stomach because you're losing your balance. I wonder why, I'm sure there's obviously, there's clearly medical science behind it. I just don't yeah. know what it is, but I wonder why. I just, I have no idea. I'm gonna guess it's like, my, my baseline understanding of biology is that everything errors on the side of keeping you alive. So if your body is just experiencing any distress, like object number one is to just purge purge whatever's wrong. Like that's kind of what a fever is. It's trying to like bake insurgents mm -hmm. out of your body. So yeah. it kind of makes sense to me that if your body freaks out then it's like, oh, I guess throw up. <laughs> Maybe that'll fix it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cause there's like, uh, I, I know that like, so if, if you get actually choked out, like not, not lose breath, but actually like choked out your body, like your brain just starts turning off systems. It's like click, 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 click. So it's, it's actually pretty smart about mm -hmm. managing things and keeping you alive. So if your brain loses oxygen flow, it's like, okay, we got to start shutting shit down to keep our body alive. So right. I, f I feel like, and if you're getting choked, going unconscious is probably logically the last thing you want to do. But, uh, yeah, it's just you're keeping your heart ticking and your brain not decaying. Mm -hmm. So maybe nice. that's, yeah. Maybe that's what it is. You might know. have eaten something weird. You don't lose anything by, by getting it out of your body. But maybe you gain, I don't know. Uh, getting a rotting snake out of your stomach. <laughs> yeah, the, so some of the chat's saying like because mushrooms and plants will induce those feelings, throwing up, throwing up can purge oh. any eaten materials that may be toxic. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm asking is why does your body throw up if you're doing things that will upset your balance? So it's, like why? It's because you know, like, it yeah. has a similar experience to if you ate that weird mushroom that made you feel dizzy. So, so that means my body's stupid then. Well, no, it's like evolution, right? So in the past, it came from but, the mushroom. But Craig, and my body should from... know that I'm in a VR helmet <laughs> moving around doing shit rather than eating mushrooms. Yeah, how do we teach our body what VR is? <laughs> uh, millions of years of adaptation and evolution. Yeah, right? yeah, that's right. I think that's the core of it is, is our, evolutionarily speaking, and, and this is an obvious statement, so apologize if I'm over-intellectualizing, but... We're, you know, we're still supposed to be barefoot running through woods, you know, ki grabbing deer and tearing their jugulars out with our teeth. Who uh, says we're not? Yeah. That's true. Every time I <laughs> climb into the VR Harry now. Potter ride, I feel, I feel that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, our bodies are just not meant to perceive motion in one direction, but feel motion in another. That mm -hmm. in a natural yeah. state, that never, ever happens. So I, what I would guess is that that sensation is induced, that sensation induces a biological feedback similar to eating something that's yeah. really yeah. really raunching you up absolutely Body, that, that's a good point awesome. your body receptors know what's like it's happening just not what's occurred like what's causing it because your eyes don't translate into actual information it's just kind of perception right so right right we or like you know any other sense for that matter so our body's like okay it's either the mushroom it's vr or they're like being thrown <laughs> around by a metal you know, claw in of Harry Potter <laughs> land. <laughs> yeah. He's like, whoa, which one do we want to do? And they're like, it's like a board meeting. And they're like, uh, in case it's the mushroom, throw up. And they're like, no, no, <laughs> yeah, it's no. probably not the mushroom. It's been a long time since the mushroom was a problem. <laughs> There's one neuron banging the table. It's always the it's mushroom. The mushroom. <laughs> it's clearly the mushroom. And that's, it's the loudest neuron in the room. Yeah. That's why, that's why it always works because he, he got it through every time he was right. The mushroom then we throw it up Man, weird body shit. This may go down a path. Well, we, we go down it fairly frequently, but I am I am reminded now of an incident. Actually, Bruce, you were in the room when this happened. Uh, this was years ago when I was still on a bicycle. Um, I fell off my bike pretty bad and like scraped up my arm. And those long those long scrapes are really annoying because it's really hard to dress. It's just a lot of surface area to cover. Yeah. So I uh, I also in my inf this was in my infancy of learning first aid because I had yet to truly injure myself enough. Um, 
I put like a uh, I put like a full adhesive bandage just on top of the scrape, so it wasn't really exposed to air after after I cleaned it out. And then I went to sleep, and then I woke up, and I was like, ah, let's check the old thing. And it like was kind of like smushy, like there was liquid under there. And I was like, well, that's weird. Well, let's just see what Ooh. happens. And then uh, later on that day, I remember I was like, I was just at my my desk editing, and I put my arm on my armrest. And then when I picked it off, I, I felt like, well, that was something was off about that. And then I looked down, and there was like a little wet splorch on the armrest. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And then I looked at my arm, Man, and like, where this is going? Yeah. There like there was like a little gap that had appeared in the bandage, and there was just stuff, just stuff. I I don't know. I guess pus. It's pus. Really. Yeah. yeah. Pus. Yeah. So then I was like, Ugh! and I, I just scuttled out of the room real quick and went to the bathroom and had to tear that off and have oh. it just kind of like, bleh. um, oh. yeah, that was, that was gnarly. That was, that was, why do bodies do that? I don't know. Well, I think that's like an emergency clot thing, right? Where it's like, Hey, it's not, it's not like, it's like, imagine like there's a hole in the ship and you know, they're, they call it like captain. There's still blood coming out, and he's like, "Fucking throw everything we got on it, dump the whole fucking like urinal, like whatever we have." It's everyone. They just like start throwing shit at the hole, trying to block it up, and then it just kind of gloops out. That's yep. that's my interpretation, at least. I also don't know why pus is white. Is it? It's not because of white blood cells, right? I mean, is I, that, I think it is. Pus is, is that like why? yellow. What? Like, well, are you talking about the white? stuff inside pimples? Yeah, dead well, white blood cells. There, there, there is also like there's lots of different colors of pus. Oh, um, I am so but, glad uh, we're on this now. But Wait. yeah, is it, it is white blood cells. Okay, all right. People, people in chat are saying it's white blood cells. Oh, um, so if it's white blood cells, then it's a war. It's like they go to yeah, the point yeah. of the of the infection of the opening, right. and yeah. then just on billions, the white blood cells are throwing themselves into the fire, and then just oozing out of your little stump like oh i should have watched that <laughs> well the well the newest like so the newest pus you see is white and people are saying and Ooh. this is what i thought people are saying it's yellow because it's old so like basically yeah. as the older it gets it like things die and did you guys know this is uh, Decay. Even, even more stuff that i don't want to talk about but i will you know you know why poop is brown right because we eat brown things no because uh it's a bunch of red blood cells that have died no, oh, what happened to them? And that's why it turns black if you bleed into your poo. Well, that I'm not sure about. But we all know this. I do know <laughs> that it is brown because it, it's sloughing off uh, old red blood cells that eventually turn brown because they're dead. Um, so that makes sense why pus would be yellow because they used to be white and then they, they yellow out because they're old. But I, I see this word in chat from Cloudless One and I want to say it out loud. Sarah Sanguinius. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds right. I don't yeah. know what that means, but it's fun to say. Is the term I've been practicing that in my head for like the last 30 seconds. Serosanguinous Sanguinous is, like is, blood. is yeah, it's a term used to describe discharge that contains both blood and a clear yellow liquid known as blood serum. Oh yeah, I know serum from uh, from donating. The if you do it, if you play the game right, they'll pay you for it cuz I don't know if it still goes into makeup, but it used to. I felt like such a sap giving my blood to the the Red Cross when somebody'll pay you for it. Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're right. That is true. Somebody will pay you for your plasma or blood, but you could also donate it because your body will remake it, Lawrence. Yeah, it's free. I love it. And you get free just cookies. Like, it's like semen. Yeah, it's the our bodies are clearly very wasteful. Uh, this is something to look forward to in <laughs> Denny Villeneuve's Dune. Uh, they wear suits that capture all of the water coming out of their bodies. So look out for that. But I think we take it a step further. Uh, the tears from our eyes, the dribbles from our, our penises, the uh, the swamp from our cracks. We need to capture all of this and recycle it. We're just wasting too much energy right now. Is it like a light suction suit that's like constantly just an astronaut suit? Is that what that's that basically... what that is? Yeah, it's basically guess, just sucking yeah. all it's sucking all the waste out of you. Yeah, why not? And, it, and then it throws it into like a fusion reactor on your back. And that powers your suit, and you can move around. <laughs> the bioorganic <laughs> waste becomes nuclear energy. I, I saw, so the other day, <clears throat> I thought I was a genius. The other day, I, I was driving, and I was like, wait a minute. There's so many cars in Los Angeles. Why the fuck haven't we used the power of traffic to power our houses and everything else? Like, actually, you know, generate power. And it turns out that already exists. There is, there are actual wind turbines that are in the middle of freeways. Cool. That is, 
as cars go by, they, it generates energy. And I was like, I was like, whoa, that's, that's cool fucking idea. cool. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was a genius. It turns out I'm not. Yeah. Somebody already had As a idea. kid, I was like, why don't we just build treadmills and then it, those get us places instead of wasting energy on these cars. And I still believe it. Where's I mean, my slow. damn treadmills? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty slow. Uh, no, what if they're they, fast treadmills, though? Well, then wouldn't you fall over? No, but you're in a car. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think I know where you're going. It's like Minority Report is what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, they're all on tracks, basically. Right. You're on a track, and then you're like, I'm signaling to get on this track, and that track merges with that track. And the guy behind you is like, wait, no, I wanted to go that way. And then he gets sent the other way, and then he goes down the middle, and he blows up. So. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, It's not a perfect system. I'm still working out the kinks. Crack, have you ever heard the uh, phrase, don't reinvent the wheel? <laughs> that, mm. uh, that applies True. literally perfectly here. For this, yeah, uh, I guess so. <laughs> but what if, uh, what if the, okay, the rows were, they're not powered, but all of the movement of the cars mm -hmm. moves it, and that generates energy, you know? Well, then that means the cars are moving less. The cars are moving less, yes. It's like Newtonian right. at that point, I think. And... Or yeah. The momentum of the road will carry people whether they want to go or not in a direction. <laughs> this feels like, so there was a, Craig, and you're getting very close to a, a, a physics dust up that happened on a forum a long time ago. What would happen if yes, a plane, oh, you I know this one? This. Yeah. I know this one, yeah. <laughs> so if a plane is on a treadmill, a giant air tarmac sized treadmill, and mm. the plane as as much thrust as the plane is pushing forward, the treadmill is also rolling backwards with the same power and velocity. Will the train will the plane ever take off, or will it stand completely still? Um, wouldn't the wouldn't it, the like the wheels blow up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, potentially, um, actually. Uh, the the idea is that the thrust in a plane comes from the engines, and not from the wheels. So the thrust would still be there. The wheels would just spin twice as fast. Or mm. it would lose whatever energy to the friction in the wheels. And potentially, the, yeah, the wheels would blow up from spinning too fast and getting too hot. Right. But theoretically, theoretically, it would indeed accelerate, which would create well, lift. And then it would get off the ground. Interesting. Okay. Well, we have, dis we have disagreements in Lawrence's chat. I love currently. bringing it up because everyone's like, no! Yeah. Because there's, well, people are saying, most people are saying it won't take off. But I do see a couple that say it will take off. So and if there's a car, the, the, the forward thrust is coming from the wheels on the road. The wheels on a plane are like a shopping cart. Uh, so lift is created by wind resistance. No, lift is created by the differential and air pressure over the top and under an airfoil. I just said that because I wanted to sound smart. I'll stop. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love like throwing this out and seeing, seeing people like, because it led to all these amusing diagrams of like a boat that has a magnet and then a crane coming off the boat with another magnet that pulls that magnet forward. And then you got, you got infinite, you got infinite acceleration right there with magnets. So wait, so what's the answer? Oh, the, I think the airplane would actually take off. Oh, the uh, airplane does take off. Okay. All right. Depending All right. on, uh, depending on how efficient the wheels are. I've uh, yeah. Cause I've always, I've always wondered, I, I remember seeing that thread. Oh, there's a develop, Mythbusters about it? Okay. <laughs> develop, it develop in real time. So, and I always wondered about that, but... Okay. <clears throat> now we know. Uh, mystery solved. It'll take off. Yay! Um, <laughs> wait, here's another, like... Here's another physics fun thing that happened to me. I'm choosing to use that word. Uh, Stephanie found these, like... Uh, like, glass bottles that have, like, chocolate shavings and, and like, cinnamon sticks in them. The idea is that you like pour in whiskey and then just let it sit to infuse it. Uh, and I, as a brilliant individual, took my bottle of vodka from the freezer, poured it into one of these, put the cap on, and then mm -hmm. let it infuse at room temperature. Of course. So as the alcohol uh, started to increase in temperature, it also increased in volume, which after about 30 minutes, there was a bang and the bottle just exploded. What? That's shooting right. like That's... glass shards and booze and little yeah. like chocolate flakes all around my apartment. Um, yeah. So I should have known better, but if you want to explode a glass bottle, that's how you can do it. So wait, Lawrence, did it, did it fill up? Was there too much uh, in the bottle, or was it was it air pressure that that blew it up? It was air pressure because there was a stopper in the top. 
Uh, nah. if, if there wasn't a stopper in the top, the alcohol would have expanded and just kind of run over the top of the bottle, I assume. Yeah. That's, but, uh, yeah. You know, have you guys ever put um, a soda can in the freezer? No. The soda can in the freezer is yet another mistake. Right, because yeah. it freezes and then explodes. And, and it freezes and it explodes. So yeah, so basically as, as it as it expands, it eventually will will blow up all over your freezer. So mm. be careful. <laughs> Don't do that. So wait, or put it, it in there for ten minutes. Does it does it explode and still be liquid, or does it open like those tubes of like biscuit dough? Does it just go? But it's already frozen. Well, it's so still it's liquid, right? It's just the air pressure is what is being pushed no. out, and that's the. Explosion. Yeah, I, I mean, like, it's, honestly, it's a combination of both. So, like, it's it's ice and liquid, but it, yeah, it doesn't come out like a uh, like a tube of toothpaste. It'll, oh, okay. It, it's not all frozen, so like, it'll it'll explode, and then uh, you'll get some liquid here, you'll get some ice there, etc. It but, says, "Trust me, it explodes." What? Oh, yeah. What the heck? Why is there a boosting stream banner over my chat right now? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I I noticed that too, and I was like, "What is that?" A boost promotes the stream to highly visible areas on Twitch so more viewers can wow. discover this community. You can unlock boost through community challenges. What the heck? Oh, I is it know. not microtransactions? It's No, no, I think it's like channel points. Challenges. Channel, channel points. points. But I don't know how it happens or how it starts or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Well, thank you guys. Uh mm. I'm 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 about to pick up another 1 million subs on Twitch right now. So thank you Whoa, for that. Whoa, that's a lot of subs. What can I say? What can I say? People can't get enough of the old law dog. <laughs> um, have have you guys right. been well, using the uh, predictions in channel points much? Many times. It's been, it's been a fun. It's been a fun. Many times. Edition. We were. Uh, let's see. I think when was Monday? Two, two days ago. Um, I was playing the Fellowship of the Ring video game for PS One. Um, <laughs> or no, maybe it was PS Two. I think yeah, it's PS Two. Sorry. Um, and um, <laughs> there, uh, we got to the, it's based on the books, not the movie, um, which is great. Cause I had to go through like an hour of Tom Bombadil singing. Fuck yeah. Um, but then after that, <laughs> we get to the, uh, the, uh, the prancing pony, you know, the inn where you meet Strider and we turn the corner and we see this like cloaked individual immediately framed by the doorway. And I'm like, all right, chat. Is that Strider? And they ran a prediction, and like six million channel points were spent saying, "That's fucking Strider." Uh -huh, and I yeah. walk up, and he's like, "You all bet shouldn't be here." And I turn around, and like Strider's just in the corner right next to him. And oh, like, no. <laughs> oh no! And they just got gutted. It was it was great. I think it's the most loss we've had in one in one prediction. I, uh, Lawrence, have you been using those points? Those, I uh, it's really I have fun. not. Oh God, ew. What? 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 Mumbo from behind. I've yep. never... What an awful image. <laughs> what the hell is Mumbo? He's from Banjo-Kazooie. He's like the shaman character. No, that's why I don't know. <laughs> Bruce, oh, we gotta get you, you up to date on these, such like... Disgust. Yeah. Ugh. We gotta... That's we, why I don't know. Kraken, we gotta, we gotta team up to make Bruce play the... Uh, yeah, we gotta culture this, this boy. The late, rare, <laughs> N64 platformers. <clears throat> I think... I played, the best. I played, uh, like, Donkey Kong Country and that kind of shit. Did you play but Donkey Kong Country 64? I yeah. think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 64 did. I, I, was, was... I just it, didn't, it was my first like video game pretty much. I just didn't play Banjo-Kazooie. I don't know why I missed that trend. I think you'd like it. It's it uh, it's filled with like innuendo humor and is very like clever. Um, like I, uh, yeah. clever for a 13-year-old or... It, I mean, it's still... Uh, they've, there's like dynamics. There's like characters that are implied <laughs> to be like a single mother. And then, like, huh. I don't know. There's just like weird, okay, like jokes and references that you're like, did that game just do that? And yeah, I think I okay. think that's good. I think it holds All up. Right. All right. You have to play um, it on an N64, Bruce. Though you're not allowed to play it in okay. any format that goes over 10 frames per second. All right. If you want to bring over your Nintendo 64, we'll fire it up. Because I don't, uh, I don't have Shit, one of those. I gotta buy one. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I sold, have one I, I, I sold it for a hundred, a hundred dollars back in 1999. So, <laughs> hey, solid move. Yeah. Oh wait, no, no. I'm sorry. Not not 1999. Uh, 2002. 2002. Oh. I played a lot of Goldeneye in 2001. I remember playing a lot of Goldeneye with my friends. And then when I sold it, it was a sad day. And I think I can't remember what I used that hundred dollars for. Maybe something great. 
Now I'm trying to... <laughs> Maybe something great. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Nightfire. I had a lot of Nightfire gaming sessions with my buddies. I'd invite them over and play fucking odd job. Was that that weird Bond ripoff? Like, because it was a Bond game, right? No, it, it was licensed. Yeah, it was like because it wasn't as good. I remember playing it. Nightfire remember, was good. I remember playing Nightfire and being like, "This isn't as good." It and is I, good. And I threw it in the trash. And no, I'm just kidding. Oh my god, <laughs> that's where the hundred dollars went. You're throwing all these games in the trash. <laughs> Oh, man. I remember in those days, I was already sort of developing my, my pretentious uh, video game analysis habits. I remember <laughs> uh played GoldenEye, you know, made by Rare. And then I played, what was it? Um, Perfect Dark? I mean, that was the next Rare one. But they made another N64 007 shooter that was not made by Rare. But they tried to make it as much like GoldenEye as possible. Was it The World Is Not Enough? Yeah, the second Bond movie had a similar shooter. It even had, like, the parenthetical armor and health had like similar control schemes. But I remember yeah. thinking like, this is this is weird. This is like a knockoff. They're they're clearly imitating Goldeneye, but they like the the level design isn't as good, the multiplayer is not as good. Uh so yeah, that was the first time I was like, wait a minute, this isn't the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> and then Perfect Dark came out and people really liked that game, but again, shh, I don't understand how people even back in the day I was like, this runs so bad. <laughs> even like God, it, did. Oh. It, it ran it ran very poorly. People want to like uh, and Bruce, I know we were kind of commiserating about this now. This, this, okay, this is some boomer shit, so I apologize in advance. But Perfect Dark, right? You buy it, follow up to Goldeneye, hell yeah. You go home, and you plug it into your sweet N64, you turn it on, and all you can play is multiplayer because you don't have the RAM expansion pack. That's right. So then you got to pay more money for that to, to That's right. even, play the, even play the campaign. And then when you do that, it runs at like five frames a second. Uh -huh. um, but it is cyberpunk, so that's cool. Um, but still, I just remember playing Perfect Dark and being like, bleh, <laughs> like this sucks. Uh, but I didn't have the internet to talk to. I was just like, well, I guess I'll return this to Blockbuster and go on with my life. Um, that's, that's, what, that's what you used to do. When things were bad, you used to go, this is stupid. And then you'd tell your friend, this is stupid. And then you'd either return it or throw it in the trash. <laughs> like, it, and that was the end of it. And then you moved on with your day. <laughs> Speaking of Kraken, I don't know if you're a... Perfect Dark may have been just a just a teensy bit before you hit your gaming stride, but are you were you amped about seeing that that reboot at all? Um, so I'm, I was a huge Rare fan. Uh, I I think yeah because of my age, I like missed the Perfect Dark hype because I was still on the you know younger games, and I my parents didn't want me playing shooters and stuff. So I think my first genuine shooter was like Halo One or Halo Two. I forget. Um, so yeah, I, I missed the, the first generation of shooters like Goldeneye. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was not the first generation Kraken. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Wolfenstein or whatever. I mean, it was, it was the first generation of console shooters that people played other than maybe Halo. Like Halo was on Xbox and all, although no, X, uh, Halo was what, 2000 Lawrence? Mm, yeah, I think so. That sounds and then right. Gold, Goldeneye was around that same time, but I think it was before. Goldeneye I'm was not... like 97. Yeah, 97. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, Halo Combat. <clears throat> Actually, thinking about it, going from like Goldeneye to Halo Combat Evolved in like three years is pretty intense. It honestly was. It was a oh, huge evolution. 2001. So four years, but still. Because I, I remember playing Halo and being like, holy shit, this is like a hundred times easier to control than mm -hmm. Goldeneye, because I played so much Goldeneye. It had two sticks. You the can two, look and aim sticks. at the same time. The two sticks was huge. Um, that was a big deal. Uh, yeah, so I, I remember that changing a lot. And I think ever since then, I, I don't know that that's really evolved much. Has it? What, In terms shooters? of console? In terms of console? Um, like the next big still? step was uh, was Modern Warfare, actually. I think adding yeah, snap aiming. I was going to say Call of Duty. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, snap aiming. Right, lock, yes. lock aiming helps a ton uh, to yeah. like make shooters feel better. There was also right. like a wave of shooter design. So it's it's weird. Yeah, you, don't forget Turok. It's funny you bring up Turok because Turok was a console shooter that was still very PC in its design sensibility. These like huge labyrinthine levels. Uh, but then you get like more corridor focused like Call of Duty. And I think what that did for for game design was, first of all, it like it made the field of view real tiny uh, to make sense on a TV, and then it, all the map designs in Call of Duty like it's either straight in front of you or like forty five degrees off to either side. Yeah. So there's really no more looking around or looking up or down because you don't really have that freedom when you're on a stick. 
Uh, so yeah, it, it was neat to see Call of Duty sort of further adapt console design or console shooter design. What's cool now is it's opening back up because people are so familiar with playing console shooters that they can start being a little more open and experimental about designing things. A game like Prey coming out on consoles to me is like, okay, it's come full circle. Console yeah. shooters are good now. I mean, look, <clears throat> I'll just say it. In 2001, I built my first gaming PC and realized that there was nothing better than the PC and there never would be um, in terms of consoles, in terms of other... Uh, PC gaming is the greatest thing in the world and no one can tell me different. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. It's a it's, joke. I'm trying, I'm trying wish, to trigger you. Yeah, I wish I wish we you. had somebody here that would that would fight you on that, but I think we're all pretty I, firmly PC I mean, squad. I, I don't actually like I don't actually think that. It's one of those things where like when I actually built my first gaming PC in 2001, I was like, "Holy shit, this has opened up a whole new world and I loved it." And I sort of put the consoles to the side, but not on purpose. It was just cuz all my friends played PC too. So I ended up just playing PC games. Both both Kraken and Bruce. And actually, Kraken, you haven't talked for a while, so I'm going to throw this to you first. What is the first PC game you can remember playing? Uh, oh, boy. Um, oh, this is going to be... This is a stretch. Um, my dad showed me... This, like, early PC gaming was... Um, Oh man, the uh, Oriental Express had a video game um, where you play a, I guess like the detective and you're like going around. It's basically like a bunch of still frames and you click on the screen for like a clue and then, you know, it pulls up a yeah. piece of paper and you yeah. read through it and stuff. And there's like very few animated, like, you know, movie segments. Um, and it was like weirdly terrifying because everything was so like start stop um and like you would turn a corner and it's just like bam new visual there might be a slightly animated character in the corner or like it, it was like the old nancy drew games but like before mm -hmm. nancy drew um yeah. and we quit playing because a we got stuck but we got b because it gave me such violent nightmares because <laughs> there's one part where you go into a compartment and you see a clue and you pick up the clue and you like you're reading the clue and then as soon as you put down the clue there is a person in your face that picks you up and throws you out the fucking compartment window and your oh, character scary. dies blood on the screen <laughs> and i as a kid i was just like just completely traumatized but after that i played pajama sam and i love pajama sam so <laughs> how old were you for that game oh man i must have been like Four or five. Oh wow! You so see, you were really young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like yeah. I, I was starting to get into games a lot, and uh, now maybe it was like maybe it was yeah maybe it was later on, but whatever. Like it was, I was really young, and my dad like loved the Oriental Express. He's like, oh, why don't we just play this together? And just clearly didn't uh, look that far into it. <laughs> yep, yep. Were you, I'm trying to find the game now. Kraken, were you the sort of child who internalized your terror, or did you like break down on the ground? into a ball <laughs> sobbing and stuff totally internalized i'm still that way i've got so much fucking trauma up here buddy you have no idea <laughs> i got that sensibility i i i have to admit part of me did want to imagine young little kraken with his little beanie cap and his little band-aid on his <laughs> knee his little like you know his little shorts little lord flannery shorts seeing something traumatic and then just running away with his lollipop crying but unfortunately yeah, yeah it, it doesn't it doesn't add up i can see you just kind of cold-faced taking mm -hmm. it all in and then you just kind of quietly get like, up and then just walk out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> and then you dream about it. You dream about it for literal years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bruce, how yeah, about you? Was... What was your uh, what was your first PC ass game? So are we talking uh gaming PC or are we talking like, you know, Apple IIEs and shit like that? What do you what do you mm. think? Well, I'm curious how... like when you built your PC, what was like the first thing you installed and played? The first well, the first thing that I that I installed and played was Battlefield 1942. Hell um, yeah. Yeah, cuz yeah. cuz I cuz I played that Counter-Strike and Tribes all the time on my friend's computer. We would rotate because he had a gaming computer and I didn't. And eventually he was just like, you should just build one so we can play together. He was right. Um, so, but Battlefield was the very first thing that I was like, I have to install. Th that was the game where it was, it took 15 minutes to load every map. So you get to listen to that you music. Would, you would sit there, you'd like be like, okay, I'm going to join a session. Like it was like a server browser and you click on a server browser and, and no joke. You'd sat there and stare at a loading screen for 15 minutes, hoping the game would load. 
and put you in the server. Because once it did, oh man, did you have fun. <laughs> but it would crash out sometimes and you, then you'd have to restart it and then wait another 15 minutes. But yeah, Battlefield 1942 was the first game I played on my gaming PC. You know, it's, it's funny you bring that up. Um, because yeah, PC, you used to have to wait on PC gaming quite a bit. Loading yeah. or, or installing. Yeah. Like I had, a, I had a Game Boy Advance next to my PC for exactly those scenarios. Uh, but and, and at some point it flipped. Console games took forever to load and PCs were all in solid states. So then PC became the platform of like immediate loads and fast action. And consoles are more like the thing where you're going to be scrolling Twitter for a while while this game loads up. Huh. huh. Yeah. yeah, you're, you're right. It, I hadn't even realized that. It is absolutely flipped. But now next gen, in there with the solid states, I actually like it. My Series X turns on before my TV boots up. It's great. Wow. Jeez. And Shit. you guys, it's the it's the damn future. I have a I have a TV now, and I guess it's got a magical remote thing. But now whatever device I have plugged into my TV, the remote controls it too. So I can actually flip through stuff on an Xbox or my Shield TV just with the remote. I don't know how to wow. turn it on with the remote, so I still need the controller, or I just like kick it with my toe. Wait, but what are you what are you using to do that, Lawrence? I don't know. It's just part of the TV tech. Uh, there's a name for it, but I remember like I was fiddling with my TV settings, and I was like, "Oh, it looks a little dim." So I was just, and I've been doing that compulsively since I, I got a new TV, just adjusting everything over and over and over again. But I like backed out of the settings, and then I started scrolling through Twitch streams. I wasn't even thinking about it, and then I looked down and saw the TV remote in my hand, and then looked up and saw that the Xbox was on, and it just it just worked. And I was like, <laughs> "It was crazy." What? Yeah, that's cr that's crazy. I gotta so I, you gotta tell me what technology that is because I. I, yeah, I gotta check that out. Is it, it's yeah, it might be a CEC, maybe. But I, but I didn't know that it did that. I want maybe my television's too old. Hmm, that's or, that's awesome. You might have it turned off because like that can oh consumer electronics control. Okay, so there's like a there's like a standard API to uh, to yeah. can, to do menu interfaces and stuff. That's pretty cool uh, because yeah, I at one point I had a control or like a remote for my TV, a remote for my sound bar. And then an Xbox controller for my Xbox, and an Xbox mm -hmm. controller for my Shield TV, and then Stephanie also has a control or a remote for her TV and a remote for her soundbar, and then all of her controllers. So it's, I, I do like anything that allows me to sort of screen out the amount of battery-operated plastic in my living room. Yeah, absolutely. This is I've this is like such first-world talk, but no, 100. Mm -hmm. percent It totally is. We just, we're talking about digital entertainment now. Oh, my remote does cool stuff. Real quick, I. Uh, I kind of went into a, a trance after I brought up that traumatizing experience, and I found it. Um, oh, there it is, the Last Express on, uh, yeah, on YouTube. This is this isn't the clip that I'm remembering, but this will give you an idea of how visually cursed it is, because I forgot it's rotoscoped people in Ooh. a mix of photorealistic and painted environments. I I I I I don't know what. <laughs> How to describe it? Just uh, there is something we, about mixed just, media that can be terrifying. Yeah, it, no, that's true. Yeah, it's true. Well, just watch this one scene of a character walking past the camera, and it's enough to give you shivers. I didn't. I I didn't like this stuff at all when I was a kid. Ooh, yeah, that's like scanner darkly look. Yeah, I, this this kind of stuff because I mean it does look real because they would just animate over a person. Yeah. Was this the so clip like, where you get thrown out of a, a window? No, no, I I couldn't find that yet, but I just just the visual of like these like static images with like realistically yeah. animated yeah. cartoon people. It oh man, it because like when they're walking towards you, it really feels like someone's walking towards you. And you're powerless to do anything. Oh, that might be that might be one of the scenes. I mean, especially right as now. a especially as a child, you know, like yeah, as a child, this is this probably doesn't help you feel good. It's because it, I mean, like things are at stake. Your character dies, you know, and it looks real. Yeah, yeah, like I, and oh, man, and you're like, it looks like a cartoon. So you're like, hey, I, I love cartoons, and then <laughs> uh, you're you get thrown off of a. Tra moving train and someone pulls a gun on you and a knife and it's like Man. this isn't this isn't what cartoons are supposed to be <laughs> maybe you were not supposed to be playing this when you were four yeah i think i think that's fair oh yeah there's our, our monkey 
<laughs> oh, no, he found another screenshot. Yeah, Lawrence is putting this over the monkey, I think. Yeah, I'm going to get there. <laughs> it's a good face. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm already making next week's thumbnail. This is... I'm so, yeah, so Lawrence... Just uh, audio listeners, Lawrence is making a... Uh, uh, another thumbnail now with a scary still from the game that Kraken just described. Getting too ahead of myself here. Um, the more that I learn about Kraken's childhood, the more it sounds like my childhood. Oh. But but we can exchange like different media. So like you were playing computer games that scared you, and I was accidentally watching movies on television that were scaring me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like uh, of course everyone knows it, but uh, Large Marge. When her uh, when her face explodes. Oh, from uh, Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, yeah, from uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, I dreamed about that for years to come. When I saw that as a child, I should never have seen that. And it's, it's <laughs> the same as uh, Beetlejuice when they like exaggerate all their faces with like claymation and Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. Oh, so scary! Yeah. Oh my gosh, so scary! Yeah, there's a few images that really stick with you. Um, mine was, I think, another cartoon related one. Uh, my like grandfather was watching The Simpsons, and I like came downstairs. And usually that's fine; like it looks like a cartoon. They might make a joke or like say a word that I know is bad, but like you know, it's not gonna affect me that much. Uh, but it was over Halloween, um, so it was the Treehouse Horror episodes, mm -hmm. and I I was only watching for I think maybe forty seconds. But the forty seconds that I was watching happened to be for the episode where. They are in like uh, uh, fucking um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and Goldilocks goes and like Bart and Lisa like go and you know do all the things Goldilocks does, yeah. and then they leave. And because Goldilocks didn't do those things, she overslept, and the bears arrive, and then it cuts to an outside shot of the cabin with her screaming as blood pours from under the door. Oh and man. I, I, I was just watching this and of course I know the story of Goldilocks and I'm a kid so like I'm like oh I know the story and then that happens and I just my my grandfather's just going oh oh gosh oh god oh oh god oh, no. <laughs> it's happening because he knows this is not a good thing for me to see but it's already too late and, and I was burned just into so your traumatized brain. yeah did uh have you ever told your parents about that I've never I've never told my parents or like grandparents or anything about the stuff that scared me as a child I feel yeah. like I should. I feel like, would that help me? Do you think if I went to my parents was like, hey, that one time that I saw Pee-wee's Big Adventure really scared me for like seven more years after that. Would that, would that, or I is mean, that just opening old wounds? I think, I think we've gotten past them for the most part. I mean, I, I'm speaking from my experience. I don't know if you still think about Pee-wee's <laughs> explosion. No, that, no, I don't. That I much. Don't. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, it's fun to bring it up with them because chances are they don't remember. But like in some cases, I think, a parents like oh yeah i remember when you saw that and i felt so guilty for like a week or something like that you know that that's a, like a pretty cathartic thing to, to talk about yep yep i i yeah i think you're probably right there was a, <laughs> there a lot was of a good pictures in that th there was a commercial uh when i was like really young we're talking like two or three years old that um it was for little shoes they were for kid they were kids shoes but they were tiger shoes and in the commercial the kid, the little kid would put on a tiger shoes and he would turn into a tiger. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure the commercial made it seem really cool. <laughs> However, it scared me very much so <laughs> as a child. If I put on the wrong pair of shoes, I become a fucking tiger. Well, well, because so I, I think my parents took me like really intensely interested in this commercial as that I liked them. So oh, somebody, no. somebody <gasps> bought them for me for Christmas or whatever it was. And they showed up as a Christmas present for me. And I just exploded into tears because I couldn't put the shoes on because I thought for sure they were going to turn me into a tiger. And That's so now, great. Now I think back and I'm like, man, I would have been a way cooler little kid. If I was actually excited to turn into a tiger, I should have been excited to turn into tigers are cool. I mean, tigers are cool, but with that, you're, you know, you're worrying like, I'm never going to see my family again. They're not going to take care of me because I'm a tiger. Do you like think maybe there's, I there's thought about of, all those things? Maybe I did. <laughs> I mean, I did. I as a kid, that was the first stuff that went through my. It was like rational. I was like, okay, once I turn into a tiger, how much my life's really gonna change? And it was like a fair bit will change. Probably not <laughs> worth wearing the shoes. 
<laughs> a fair bit. Lawrence, what what uh, what would scare you as a child? What was what were things you remember? That's a good question. Um, I do remember having a recurring dream that was pretty terrifying, where the entire world would like freeze for a couple of seconds and then would continue on and i was the only one that was like conscious during the freeze oh yeah uh so i remember having a couple of dreams like that and that was deeply unpleasant um as a kid what scared me i mean i remember i remember seeing the like scene at the beginning of total recall kind of face bugging out stuff similar That's thing so there. scary it's so scary yeah it seems like like perversions of the human face uh, seem to really get kids, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I've I've read a lot of anecdotal stuff about how kids identify with human faces, and it's kind of like why there's a lot of weird faces in kids' content uh, because kids respond to faces, and especially little twists on normal faces uh, it tends to grab people. So like like the baby face in the sun and Teletubbies, things that make no sense to adults but kind of resonate with kids. Or like Thomas the Tank Engine having a big old expressive face. I've even read some analysis of Sonic the Hedgehog. That his like mm. really expressive giant face is what really appeals to uh, to kids. That makes sense. Yeah. Huh. Uh, or Spy Kids. Yep. Spy Kids. Especially Spy Kids. I actually haven't watched Spy Kids yet. And I have I've to. Seen, I've never seen it. Uh, I've been saving it. That would be it. a great movie night, dude. I would watch that with you guys whenever okay. quarantine's right. over. We could just get drunk and watch Spy dude, Kids. Dude, oh, I'm so day. excited. <laughs> uh, Kraken, one, one caveat. And I will not budge on this. Uh, when we watch Spy Kids, whatever TV it's on, the motion smoothing has to be set to maximum. <laughs> oh, is that a thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can turn it all the way up. Yeah. Garbage movies look so much worse with motion. Here's, here's something that I've done, and it was a, a life-changing moment for me. Watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation with your TV's motion smoothing set to maximum. It is the perfect cinematic experience. Uh, because bad CG pairs really, really well with like TV interpolation. It's 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 beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I so uh, I'm gonna have to Craig, and I'm gonna have to lean on your knowledge here a little bit. Is Spy Kids in the Shark Boy and Lava Girl universe? Um, it's a good question because I think that's everyone's thought. Looking at just a picture of both of them, they're like, it's Spy Kids again. Um, I don't think that's ever confirmed anywhere it looks identical so it's shocking to me but no i don't believe they're in the same universe although isn't there a new shark boy and lava girl coming out yeah shark boy and lava girl are now parents i think it's already out um and it's, it's about the already? next it's about the next generation of shark boys and lava girls did they get married <laughs> yeah what is it what is, it's we can be heroes their relationship was very confusing because I, I guess they're just superhero buddies but why do they get them married? Oh my god! I don't know if they're married. <laughs> they're to not married. Each other. Okay, but they're. I, I still don't want to think of them as adults. So it's it's weird. Regardless, also isn't one of them not the same actor? It was Taylor Lautner, right? They couldn't get Taylor Lautner, so they just got some other guy. Wait, how could they not get Taylor Lautner? He's not doing anything. I mean, I don't know. He's too important now. After the how hit many movie fight abduction. scenes are there in this game? I'm sorry, I, I just keep looking over, and there's like really uncomfortable rotoscopes attempted murder. Like quick time events, basically. Yeah. So uh, oh, from chat, it's called "We Can Be Heroes." Yeah, I actually yeah. saw that on Netflix, and I was like, "What is this?" And I looked at it, and I was like, Bleh! "Get this shit out of my face!" So, uh, it was like because it was clearly, definitely like Spy Kids, Shark Boy, and Lava Girl. Everything's green screened, etc. Man, I can't wait. Well, yeah, the first Spy Kids was very good. The second one, even also pretty good. Uh, the video game one. There was an attempt. It's you know, it's it's <laughs> visually different. It, at the time, it was shocking and amazing that 3D, uh, an entire three. This was like the age of 3D, where if it wouldn't be 3D if it wasn't like flying at your face, you know. Yeah. So there was a lot of that, but I'd I'd love to revisit those and see how they hold up. I think. Uh, let me actually look at. I think Spy Kids. We may be able, to, guys. We may be able to do an Amazon watch party. The Spy Ooh. Kids. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let me, let me, let me, I could be wrong. I could be speaking, talking right out of my ass. Um, but if we can, then that means, oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. So Wait. close. Shit. Um, cause sometimes, well, we could watch Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Okay. I'm down. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> 
Just to just bah. to provide some resolution, it seems that Spy Kids and Machete are in the same universe. Shark oh, Boy okay. and Lava Girl, same production oh, company, yeah. same book. But yeah, not uh, not officially connected in canon as of yet. Um, oh, speaking yeah, of confusing canon, I did finally watch all the Santa Claus trilogy. <laughs> I mean, okay. Was that something that we were waiting on? I guess. I guess uh, my mind's on Y two K era trash right now, because um, I'm slowly catching up. It's been long enough, and, and I've brought this up before, but it's been long enough from the 2000s that they are now old, um, and it's fun to go back. It's fun to go back and pop that little time capsule. Uh, so I've been watching a ton of like millennial era romantic comedies lately, um, including. They all have terrible names. Let's see here. A lot of with Freddie Prince Jr. Bizarrely, uh, let's see. Was it? Are there you was like about Sco- Scooby Doo? No. No, um. I mean that was later. But no, this there was like Boys and Girls. Uh, what is it? I can't remember the other one. There's like a. I feel like Bruce. Do you remember there was a wider writer strike around the early 2000s, right? Yeah, yeah. There definitely was. Um, and I feel like there were a ton of just garbage, garbage, garbage movies uh, that got greenlit. And maybe huh. that's what I'm finding is all these just shit ass romantic comedies that were populated by fresh young teens, but like the scripts didn't acknowledge cell phones and all that stuff. So, uh, man. <laughs> and they're they're also like annoyingly seventies too. There was such a seventies resurgence in the two thousands, so they all have a shitty like disco dance number in them. It's so <laughs> weird to go back and see that crap. Uh, but uh, shit, there was one with Martin Short, and that's why I was thinking about it. Uh, it has it was a rom com with Martin Short. Uh, yeah, it, it, he was a teacher. He was like a dramatic teacher, but it also had Kirsten Dunst in it, and that was basically the the list of the names. Uh, oh, no, no. Wait, was it the one with Cisco? It was crap, and he has uh, like two lines in it. Oh, oh, get over it. That's it. That's the one. That movie's yeah. terrible. But uh, I've accidentally yeah. watched that twice now uh, because, because I keep going down the same tracks. Yuck. I don't have, really have a concluding statement there. Mostly that uh, I'm running out is the problem. I, uh, I haven't seen Princess Diaries <laughs> yet, and I haven't seen Spy Kids. <clears throat> Princess Diaries is good. I, I, uh, it sounds like Kraken said Spy Kids is good. I remember it being good. You know, I remember a lot of things being good as a kid, so who knows? But... I, no, Star- no, it was Star- good. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna no, stand by that. It was. I, I'm good. pretty sure Spy Kids is a solid movie because I remember people saying like, "This is a good, this is a good movie." Like, it's not necessarily just yeah. a good kids movie. It's a good movie. Uh, and Princess Iris is also a very solid film. So, all right. Uh, this is a bit, a bit of an imposition. Uh, but Kraken, could you, could you load me up with a watch? Li- well, you probably weren't watching rom coms in the early 2000s, mm, huh? Yeah, I, I've never really been a big rom com guy. Um, I mean, you've seen like Lawrence. You've seen like. Love Actually and those sorts of what rom-com. is the uh, Sliding Doors? Is that one what was it? Sliding Doors is not a not really a rom com. It kind it's not really a com. That's as close <laughs> as I got to rom com. Uh, just... Sliding Doors is sort of like a parallel universe type of thing. Yeah, it's like sci fi rom 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 fi. Um, sci <laughs> com fi. Uh, I'm trying to look up what other things are good. I heard Thirteen Going on Thirty is good, but I've never seen it. Uh, Lawrence, stop me if you've if you've seen these films. Oh, I can watch the. Sco- I haven't watched any of the Scooby Doo's, so that's that's something. Those are those are really. I mean, like ooh the oh the Monster Island one. The oh man, that one. Oof, could not name a better drunk movie night movie. Monster Island. Scooby yeah, Doo I think Mon- that's what Scooby- it's called. Oh, I mean, it's, it's really it's really bad. It's terrible. Cyber terrible. Chase is great. Zombie yeah. Island. That's what it is. Um, have you seen like uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall? You've seen that, right? Yeah, I mean that that's okay. that's legitimately good. I more I more want like I want soulless corporate okay, trash. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, John Tucker Must Die? Have you seen oh, that, that one? sounds no, but like the the trailers it's, pitched it as like a new generation well, of Ferris Bueller, right? Have yeah, you seen all, all the hallm- there's so many Hallmark movies that fit this description? Like <laughs> any Chris Miss Hallmark movie <clears throat> will will scratch that. You know, uh, infernal itch. That is true, Girl, but those are all so homogenous that there's, yeah. there's very Girl little Girl Next Door. Oh, I haven't, I, seen door. I haven't seen you that one. Girl Next Door. You should watch Girl Next Door because that's okay. actually not so bad. Um, she's All That. You seen She's All That? Let me check. Uh, is that... Yes, that is... A, that's, that is Freddie, that's the Freddie Prince Jr. one I was trying to think yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. I think... Wait, is this the one where he drinks shampoo to commit suicide at some point? What? what? Yeah. It's pretty tasteless. I didn't actually know, but apparently Freddie Prince Jr. Well, he's June because he has a dad, like all of us do. But apparently, his dad committed suicide. 
So, and so he oh, will too. They cast what? him in a movie where he gets so upset about not dating some girl that he tries to kill himself by drinking shampoo. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that is insane. I think it was this one. Was it this one? I think she's all that. Is tradi- like, I gotta keep. I gotta keep clicking through because they're starting to blend together now. Also, uh, never been kissed. That one was yeah. actually pretty good. Drew Barrymore is a kissed. treasure. Uh, also, what a girl wants. Amanda Bynes. I don't know. I never saw it. Haven't seen that one. That one's good. I got that's nice. definitely a rom com though. If you want that, beautiful. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? The Hillary Duff started taking over the the rom com stuff at some point, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a few of those. I got to get into Duff Wave. <laughs> Man, these are all Duff Wave. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, can't hardly wait. Can't hardly wait. Ooh. With Seth uh, Seth Green is wearing those stupid goggles above his eyes. That you got to watch that one. I have seen that. that one. But I'll watch it okay. again. All right. Yeah. Because yeah, everybody wants to be uh, the cool goggles guy. Ba- uh, uh, also, no- go ahead. I was gonna say, not another team movie is a parody, and it's awesome, by the way. You you should watch it if you haven't seen it. I uh, yeah. Wait, is that the one? Try. I get it mixed up with Scary Movie, bizarrely. Hmm. They're, they're very very similar. They're very very similar, but they're both very funny. So. I don't Ten- know why this is coming to me, but when I was a kid, I watched. I like I, this was when I was starting to get interested in watching bad movies just for the sake of like understanding that they're bad and like appreciating it for that. But there was a movie that I remember watching that was called The Kid with the X Ray Eyes. And that that's it. Like that that's the whole premise. It's a kid who gets X ray goggles. Or it's like X ray fucking glasses. Okay, and then the rest of the movie is him using the the glasses to see through things. <laughs> What's the conflict? I don't think there was one. Oh, okay, all right. Well, oh, the I kid. Think it was. He gets the okay. So this is from the IMDb summary. Okay. Uh, Justin and his uncle find X-ray goggles misplaced by an evil crime ring. The criminals nice. kidnap Justin, his uncle, and the feds. And Justin has to rescue everybody. Has. As to rescue everybody, yeah. Also, the director so. was uh, directing under a, a nom de plume, so that's probably good. Oh, yeah, that's not... Oh, what? Wow, this is a working, working director. Oh, I think they're into... Uh, this director might be deep into the Hallmark cycle now. Look at this. Oh, they <laughs> yeah. are. Yeah, they are. This is crazy. It's full yeah, circle. All right, you, should, you should watch this then. Everything connects. This dude makes five movies a year. Yeah, because Holy they're guys, easy to make. They take, they, take, they take 30 days to shoot. They use stock footage from pre- other movies in the new, other, yeah. like, most recent ones. How, okay, let's see. Okay, before... Mm, let me click away from this tab. We got a game now. <laughs> um, how many movies do you think Fred Olin Ray has directed that have the word Christmas in the title? Oh, boy. Mm. I'm going to say... Hold on. I'm going to say... 30. Third? Oh wow! I was gonna say I was gonna say twelve. Okay, hold on. Yeah, Craig 30. is in here with thirty. Bruce is in he here. He can't. He can't make a movie with Christmas in the title thirty times, can he? There's been many pr- Christmases. He's right. All right, so let's see. <laughs> okay, so the find has fifteen. Let's make sure that they're all movies. So if we do closest without going over, I think. Yeah. Okay. That's it. We're at fifteen. So Bruce, under Price is Right rules, has won a copy of. One fine Christmas on DVD. <laughs> Congratulations, Bruce. That's a that's that's insane. Let's see. I, that's more than I thought. So here are all of it: the accidental Christmas, a Christmas wedding date, all I want for Christmas, Christmas in Palm Springs, a perfect Christmas, the Christmas gift, a prince for Christmas, a Christmas in Vermont, a wedding for Christmas, a Christmas in royal fashion, one fine Christmas. Didn't I already say that one? Yeah, um, you did already say that. So there's two one fine Christmases. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's two, what it sounds like. Two, Maybe you did a remake. A second fine Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Baking Christmas, a Christmas princess, and a royal Christmas engagement. Oh, wow. Ooh, fiancé killer. He that's also did movie. Sniper Special Ops, though. Can we look at that one? <laughs> it was in between the Christmas movies. Oh, that one. <laughs> in between. Oh, God. It's that's got quite a total change. Seagal and Van Damme. Hell yeah. Oh, wait, but it's Rob Van Damme. <laughs> Oh, it's that. Oh, yeah. This is the movie that everybody made fun of uh, because Steven Seagal's in it because he's so fat and he's wearing like the same. But he never does anything. I've se- I've actually seen movie reviews of this movie. 
because Steven Seagal doesn't do a thing in the film because he he's so like out of shape and overweight and old. And it's like his goatee looks asymmetrical. How did he even do that? Yeah, I, I just clicked through all the, the sales on IMDb and not a single one have Seagal in it as Jake. Let's click on the character. Oh, no photos or quotes yet. Well, there's ground yet to be tilled on IMDb.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got all those IMDb junkies out here watching yeah. and listening. <laughs> Start with there. Start with Special Office Sniper Edition or whatever. Yeah, that was a... Uh... <laughs> I remember watching a, a really funny movie review about that movie because it just was like, he didn't do a thing. That's awesome. He got his talent fee, though. That's what he did. I'm sure he did. He sure he got paid his 10, gra- 10 grand or whatever it was to shoot for four days. Man, I, so Bruce, we were discussing a little bit what, what our Twilight years might look like, or I guess specifically I was discussing, but I never once considered that I might, if I, if I start playing my cards right now, I could probably angle myself into the Seagal retirement where in general action movies, people invite me on and I just Mm kind of show up as me for a little bit, uh, collect my check and I'm gone. I just have to like put on a cut like 80 pounds and grow a goatee. That'd be easy. But don't you have to first establish yourself as an action star and then have the twilight years be you doing nothing? Oh, sure. But I, I don't think that'll be the hard part. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, I, I'm I'm poised. I'm poised. I'm uh, I'm sorry to bring up a traumatic reference, but I'm like a panther. I'm I'm hunched down and ready. And as soon as I get an email from from an agent, uh, any agent, any agent out there, <laughs> if you're listening, Not just yours, just you know, if anyone's <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just hey, me just up. forwarding this to you. I don't don't represent you, and I'm taking no cut, but. I think you'd be good for this role. I, I think hey, you'd thanks, be a agent. star. <laughs> yeah, just Lawrence.Sontag at co, Lawrence.co.biz. Uh, just send that on over and we'll we'll get to talking. I have a reel. I uh, don't have headshots yet, but that won't take long. Anyway, like I said, I'm poised and everything's ready. So once that once that little starting gun goes off, I'm, I'm away. I'm away. I'm just down the track. So Strider in your chat, Lawrence, says Liam Neeson. You could be like Liam Neeson. Start your career at 50 years old. Is that true? Did he start acting at 50? That can't be right. No, he, he got He probably got cast as an action, something yeah. at 50. Yeah. Taking he, he's mistake. probably been acting for a long time and then got his break at 50. Yeah, he was in uh, the, haunt, the Haunting. That wonderful... Uh, this is, the Haunting is also part of the shitty Y2K that I've been diving in on. Oh, he started, he started doing action movies in, the for, in his 40s. But, but I mean, like, he had been acting for years before that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's How a... Was Lee? A really exciting sequence in The Haunting where somebody is trapped on a collapsing spiral staircase. And they, they like, try to get, like, ten minutes of tension out of this. And the whole time, you're just like, just get off the staircase. <laughs> just get off. <laughs> just stop being on the oh, thing. What a cool set, though. Wait, is that fucking Owen? Yeah, Owen Wilson. Yeah. What is he doing here? He was in the movie. He's a respected actor. This is such a cool uh, set. I've never seen this movie. Guys, it's- Liam Neeson is 68 years old. He's really old. There it is. Yeah. Whoa. This was. There's a lot of tension around this staircase. <laughs> Good like, for this guy. He's doing it. Sixty-eight. I'm, hold on. Fifty-eight. You got to be in peak physical condition to require twenty-five camera cuts climbing over a fence. <laughs> he shot. You know, he shot uh, Star Wars Episode One when he was like forty-five. God, that's awesome. Wait, he was huh? a Jedi Master at forty-five. Yeah. That seems a little. Seems a little early, doesn't it? A little young. <laughs> oh, yeah, he must have been like, you know, the prodigy. Well, I guess Qui-Gon had his issues too, right? He didn't get along with the Jedi Council. He didn't really uh, do much, I think. About um, it. Uh, allow me to regurgitate what the internet has said uh, in terms of prequel memes, but people say that uh, Liam Neeson, a.k.a. Qui-Gon Jinn, was actually right in all of his uh, rebellion against the Jedi and the Jedi were the ones that were over overconfident and cocky and closed off to the Force. Hmm. Yeah, I think every prediction he had came true, sort of thing. Basically, yeah, like he was he was the one that was sort of doing the the, the things that were right uh, for the Jedi, and the uh, the Jedi like Jedi masters were not. And they and truthfully, they were they were fucking up right and left in those in the prequels because they were super overconfident and they they kept thinking they knew what was going on. They had no idea. 
those oh, assholes. Um, yep, Bruce, they're assholes. Yes. You, well, both of you guys, but definitely Bruce, because I know how big of a Star Wars fan you are. Um, yep. You would appreciate the thing I streamed last night, uh, which we're definitely going to be playing again. Uh, do you ever play Mordhau? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, a Star Wars mod for it. That what? is, I'm going to say, like, the best we've got since Jedi Academy for, like, sword play and, like, customization oh. of a character and different builds. I had more fun with it than Battlefront, hands down. Better combat than Battlefront. Mordo Star Wars mod. I'm going to look that up right now. It is insane, and we played a ton of it. You can even, like, you can make mix and match from, like, the models your own Star Wars characters. So we had, like, Yoda's head on Chewie's body using the <laughs> voice lines of, a, of an Ewok. Like, you know, you can do whatever cursed mix you want, but it was incredible. It was very Whoa, good. This looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I would love to do this. Yeah. I'll, uh, I got a server set up right now, actually, so I can, I'll, we'll maybe schedule something in, like, the next week or so. That's, that's rad. Isaac Schulz uh, hit the nail on the head, though. Qui-Gon and Dooku were kind of allied. Qui-Gon just didn't want to leave the Order. If you're referring to that that conversation in episode oh, really? two, well, yeah, I mean, Dooku invokes Qui Gon's name and talks about how they were buds. I don't know if there's more substantiating that, but that one conversation, I like, I watched episode two again recently and I was like, holy shit! That one conversation kind of exposes just how awesome Dooku was. He doesn't mm -hmm. get enough screen time for how how yeah, much of a badass get, he was. He didn't really get to do a whole lot but he was a um, master manipulator though that conversation he had with obi-wan mm, chef's kiss like everything about it was like trying to poke it poke it like vulnerabilities try to provoke a response out of obi-wan fill out where he was in the situation try to give him get him to give up more information than he was going to like it's ah, which him, which scene was that it's the one where obi-wan gets captured on geonosis and then dooku rolls in and he's like oh what are they doing to you my friend oh my god this is horrible i'm yeah, on your mm. side though like we gotta get, there's some stuff going on and like he hadn't really dropped that he was the leader of the the insurgents. Right. But like what's crazy is Dooku is like, what what if I told you there was a Sith Lord plotting some shit? Which is totally true. But he told it to him under the context that he was still a Jedi or a good guy. So he told yeah. him the truth to manipulate him, which was super badass. I don't know. Super neat. Yeah, no one remembers that scene. Actually, all most of episode two hinges on that one conversation. But I, uh, I, I don't remember the scene at all. I, I gotta yeah, look it nobody up. Nobody does. It, it's not it's not a very memorable scene. There's there's a lot of really good lore baked into those movies that were just generally bad movies. Like, the, the, it's too bad because Lawrence is right. They're, like, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that if you really listen to it and go, whoa, this is cool. This is cool shit that actually has a lot of, like, um, mm -hmm. effect on the Star Wars universe. Um, but it, but the movies are bad. <laughs> so it's kind of like, eh. The movies are, <laughs> and they're, they're written pretty poorly and directed pretty poorly. So Episode 2 might be my favorite Y2K trash. Now that I Ugh. think about it, let me think. It's so bad, dude. Yeah. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's it's frustrating because I feel like in all of the prequels, and how are we talking about prequels again, but you can like, if you just think about the words on the page, you can kind of see how smart they tried to be. Yeah. But then once it gets to the end, after all the execution and the weird acting and the strange delivery and the, the funky like edit timing and stuff like that. Most of that gets gets just like totally rinsed. You can't even see it anymore unless you like think about the scene and really do a lot of work to fill in the context and the meaning of, of what's going on in that scene. So it's it's weird because like I've actually and and Bruce, I remember I even told you this about episode four. It was like it was one of the Star Wars that I liked the least until I went back and watched it and really paid attention to how much work uh, George Lucas did to seed a lot of things and just small mentions here and there. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you get a lot of that in the prequels too. There's there's certain lines, be, they're surrounded by like CG monsters farting and like <laughs> kids giving weird delivery. But there's like individual lines that actually do say a lot. So I actually have gained a lot of respect for Lucas as a writer and a creator, um, which is silly because God, good God, he revolutionized the film industry. He, the ripple effects of what he did have been so positive and amazing that it it it's silly to like question his uh, his talent. But uh, I finally got yeah, there. There's, there's a lot of world building, and that's what Lucas has always been really good at. Uh, but directing movies is a whole other thing. <laughs> so that's uh, maybe maybe not so good at it. <laughs> that's okay. Still, still really interesting and fun movies to uh, 
like overanalyze over and over like we've done for the last 20 years. Yeah, it's fun stuff. So yeah. How, yeah. this may be cracking an egg that that doesn't need to be cracked. Uh, and and Craig and I apologize. I don't know if you're super invested into the discourse, but uh, how do you guys feel about uh, Mandalorian season two? Oh, I loved I liked it. it. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was really loved good. It. Yeah, I love. I, I actually really liked season two more than season one. Mm. I thought yeah. season one had had some pretty serious weak points. I agree. And uh, season two did not. So I, I loved it. Uh, I'm I have a concern, and I'm curious. I'm curious how you guys feel about it. But to me, what uh. What I interpreted a lot of people sort of burning out on was like the melodrama and the the, the big, well, I mean, episode nine is, is a whole thing. But to me, it's weird because Mandalorian in season one, at least, was a very direct uh, inversion of that. It was like it's about one person and small stories and mm -hmm. and something that's quiet and lonesome and out on the edge and away from all of this space magic and aristocracy and emperors and all that stuff. And then season two jumped right back into it like as, as intensely and as quickly as it could mm. so i wonder if like i get i get why people like season two more with that because i like season two more but i'm worried that it's like now now everyone's excited for season three and oh, yeah it's yeah i know what you're saying lawrence i know exactly what you're saying i'm worried that it's getting too large too i am yeah yeah i yeah i think that's a great a great way to break it down because that there were some like it honestly as a whole, it felt like almost like a D and D adventure, where it's like every episode was like its own standalone quest, um, and then eventually they all kind of were coalescing into a more consistent, like you know, bigger important. <laughs> sorry, you guys <laughs> walked into your house, dude. I'm cyberpunk, sorry. that cyberpunk glitches. That cyberpunk subreddit glitch, man. I have watched so much of that subreddit because I love it so much. Sorry for the audio listeners. Uh, we just rolled a across a clip on Reddit of an NPC walking into V's apartment and then staring V directly in the face and T posing for dominance. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Craig. Go, go ahead. Sorry, Craig. Um, no, I don't. I don't even know where I was going with that. I, I think they're it like the best parts of the series were those moments where you feel like it's this like just kind of it just it's just character development through the guise of each of these individual mm -hmm. side quests that are all quickly yeah. wrapped up but still impactful in some way or have some lasting impact on the characters you know like yep. motivations and stuff so i i think the first half of season 2 had a lot of that um i still like the end of season 2 i think they they wrapped it up as well as they could have um, or even, I mean, honestly, I, I was impressed with it. So, uh, I don't really have any big complaints, but I do see what you're coming, coming from Lawrence, that the special part of it is in danger of being lost. So yeah, I guess we'll see. I mean, the thing that I've sounds silly and obvious to say, but good writing can make anything great. Um, I just, it seems like the thing that everyone that like kind of made it popped out in people's head and made it so different was, was very quickly traded away. Um, mm -hmm. but Hey, people like it. So you can't argue with that. I don't um, mind them. I don't. I don't mind them. Like kind of gently touching the larger events in the Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. but then, but then going back to the smaller stories. Yeah, I would, I, I'd rather see the skirting stuff. around them and like being, yeah. you know, influencing them in some small way from their perspective, but not really making that their main prerogative. I think is important. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I, 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 I also like. I don't know if you guys played Knights of the Republic a lot, but it was like one yeah. of my favorite games, and. I, I remember going over that the series with like a fine tooth comb, trying to find any references or kind of you know elements that were lifted directly from that uh, that series, mm -hmm. and I I believe there's there's a few, but you can also argue either way. But um, yeah, I don't know. No. I don't know if you you found the same. I uh, there was I mean like Kotor was a, such a good story, and I I only played it a couple of times through, so I don't I don't know it like really really well, but. I always liked like people were talking about there's a lot of fan service in Mando season two, but it's but fan service can be done well. And I thought Kotor did the same thing. Like they were it they kind of like just sprinkle it in just a little bit here and there. You're like, oh, it's that, or like, oh, I remember that thing. But it but it's not like pandering to you. Yeah. Um and I thought I thought Mando did that well. Because I'm not a fan of fan service at all. Uh but I thought that I was yeah. like, oh, you know, like there, there I definitely need was to, a yeah. fair amount of it, I feel like in Mando, but it was, was all yeah. tastefully done, yeah. Um, and it felt like it built on something instead of just referencing it, being like, "Hey, remember this? You love this? 
look at it again. <laughs> it, it felt like it was trying to continue it a little bit. Well, it showed um, you new shit. I mean, like yeah. that's the because I mean it's 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 funny because people call it fan service, but in reality, it's stuff we've never seen before. So mm -hmm. like, and it fills in the gaps between time right that we didn't have you we, know? we'd never seen boba fett be a badass we'd never seen luke skywalker be a badass uh after return of the jedi so um that's what was nice about it for me is that i hadn't we all sort of had imagined it mm -hmm. but never actually got to see it on screen and and mando gave it to us so yeah that's it you can almost like the the first episode of season two was almost like a checklist for all the cool things what if there was like a secret cool underground boxing ring and then Mando's there and he gets in a fight and then he goes to another place and then they fight a crate dragon because you've heard about them right and he's gonna fight one and he's gonna kill it and I don't know I was just like oh this is just like so like it's it's interesting because I, I feel like uh Stephanie was bringing this up how like now game dev studios are hiring developers that grew up playing the games that they're now working on mm -hmm. and I feel like that was very oh. much Mando season two is John Favreau grew up being a Star Wars dork and now mm -hmm. he's there and can actually make and has the talent and can make his vision of what he always wanted to see. Yeah, so it's like we're, we're fandom media that. is becoming official media. Yeah, we're finally reaching that point in our entertainment kind of lifespan that the the new creatives that are getting actual responsibility are our fans themselves. That's true. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really thought about that. I, I always reference that usually in, in conjunction with like, you know, folks that grew up making content online because we've, you know, we're so plugged into everything um but yeah no i that's also true for directors and, and other folks in the entertainment industry so yeah i'm excited to see i'm sure there's going to be a wave of um like yes and you know ip right hopefully right. hopefully but you know. I, I, that's what i mean like yeah i i was just like i'm glad they weren't like hey guys remember because like again rogue one did the ultimate fan service it showed you what darth vader what you always imagined darth vader could do and mm -hmm. I don't think people didn't shit on Rogue One for giving you that fan service because it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was like rad. The build up the entire time was like, yeah. yeah. It was contextually um, appropriate too. It, it, it was, it was, it was, yeah. In addition so to the Death the Star thing. firing you also. Yeah, I, I thought so. I, I thought both of those inclusions, like they made sense in the arc of the narrative that was being told, that that beat was there. I know a lot of people kind of describe the Vader thing as gratuitous, but man, when it's that awesome, who gives a shit? But I also thought it like it still it still meant something. It was meant to represent how how terrible things are about to get. This is the yeah. This is the evil you are you are staring down. Also, yeah, no, I thought I, contextually I, it was uh, it was like when when Vader was theoretically his most pissed off because he kind of mellows out over the course of the original trilogy too. He does. You're right because he mm -hmm. goes from like holding a dude up and snapping his neck to like being much more calm and Jedi. So mm -hmm. I think he had all that rage from losing Padme that was still he was still carrying that and then eventually the goodness started to seep back in and kind of calm him down, I guess. That's my little, that's my little head cannon. Yeah. I, 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 I loved it. I mean, like, you know, again, I just saw uh, Sarah in my chat was saying that like, they're talking about Rogue One. It's a, we spent the whole movie cheering for the rebels and then they show Vader being a badass. Like we're supposed to cheer for him now. And mm. I, in reality, no, it was exactly the opposite for me. I was like, no, 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 no. Now I know Vader's a, a fucking bad guy and I want him dead. That's that's actually what it did for me. It, it turned him into the villain. Whereas at the beginning of A New Hope, he snaps that one guy's neck and you're like, geez, this guy's violent. But you don't know why. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's true. You're like, maybe he had don't. it coming. <laughs> yeah, you have no clue. Because it's the very first scene. You're like, wow, yeah. that was intense. And then like, <laughs> that was that was all the bad there was. It's a, uh, I mean, like, well, I guess obviously they also blew the, up a planet, but you know. Eh. Well, well, that hadn't happened yet. So, right, right, right. And, and, and he's the bad guy. He's got the, you know, the black suit on and the black mask and he looks scary and all that other stuff. But you don't really know why. But and that's why I thought Rogue One was so so masterful because it added the context of him like killing a bunch of people. And so then when he shows up on the ship, like everyone's like, "Fuck me, dude! It's Darth Vader. You saw what he did last time. Like, what what is he gonna do this time?" So I don't know. In my audience, there was a lot of cheering, so it ruined it a bit for me. Oh, gross! Sarah, no, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. People, no wait, dude, Darth Vader's a bad guy, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, to me, it was more like, like it was more like guys. a Normandy scene of like you're seeing yeah. people who are who are willing to give up their lives for what they believe is right against mm -hmm. just a whole, like it's a grinder. You're going yeah. in there to die, but they're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And it's it's the force of nature that is coming for for you and for the galaxy. That's kind of how I interpreted it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people just like, oh, he killed people. Good. And then they clap. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a little disheartening. I'll, I'll never forget the. And and I, I just scrolled past Last of Us, but man, that, that first like demo of The Last of Us Part One, 
that just had just brutal, brutal violence and hor horrific things. People screaming yeah. like it wasn't it wasn't fun violence, but still the entire arena was like cheering and howling to see a man's head get opened like an orange. It, it was, was just weird. like it was. It made me uncomfortable, and I'm yeah, not I'm not naive enough to not understand the bloodlust, but still that people can just like just like that click into that mode of loving seeing mass murder. Mm -hmm. It's a video game, right? Like I know it. Uh, I'm not. I don't think it's uh, something to be concerned about. I'm not clutching my pearls over it, but it was still a weird moment to be in a room of everybody who was just like, just, just amped to see people brutally and photorealistically <laughs> murdered. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I agree. I totally agree. Uh, Bruce, I hate to interrupt, but we're 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 churning away on time. Are you all right? You I know. know you... I I, I got to get going. Actually, I have yeah. to go do the the Bud Light show. Bruce got to go crush a light with the boys. Uh, get fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and getting light up, getting drunk off Bud Light that requires an intent. <laughs> intent. Yeah, you're, or many you're right. Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Or many Bud Light. <laughs> I've tried it. It's difficult. Bud Light Platinum's the way to go there. You got to get a couple tall boys, and then it'll it'll work its magic. Yeah. That's my that's my closing tip for me to the audience. That's a good tip. <laughs> get a couple tall boys. That's a good tip. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, thank you guys for podcasting. Um, yeah, well, good, good to be back. back. Yeah, Bruce. Bruce, you got the you got. <laughs> what is the official title? Uh, it is the boy. Uh, it's the Twitch Rivals Bud Light After Party or the Bud Light Twitch Rivals After Party Show. I don't remember what it is. Either way, it's on the Bud Light channel, and I'll be doing it in like an hour ish, an hour and a half. All right. Yeah. What well, you got good going on today, Kraken? You. you streaming today? Oh, Kraken, you get drunk on Bud Light too? <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't know if I could. Uh, yeah, no, I, I. That's a good question. I have my whole days ahead of me. I still got to figure out what I'm doing. So, TBD. I love, I love yeah. that that volatility of the morning when you have no idea. Yeah, but Lawrence, I, Lawrence, what are you I doing? Did. I'm gonna try the inaugural, the inaugural Weeaboo Wednesday. Um, so I'm just gonna play <laughs> anime oh. trash all day. Nice. S someone on Twitter hit me with the perfect phrase Weedaboo Wednesday. So. Who knows? Ooh, wow, might that's be, a lot of stuff. Might be crushing the vape and looking at some big old jiggly anime titties. And, and is there <laughs> anything better in life? I don't think so. That is pretty. That's a pretty good brand uh, identity for a, a series. I, I respect that. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll be up to that. But uh, I guess thank you guys. And um, I don't I don't know what else to say. Well, maybe we'll maybe we'll do one next week. Hopefully, maybe. Who knows? All right, maybe. We'll see. Who knows? We'll see. We knows. No, we don't. We actually don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.